The Small Business Show, episode 357 for Wednesday, December 8th, 2021. <music> Greetings, folks, and welcome back to The Small Business Show, where we are small businessing here every week at businessshow.co. Back here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. In Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. Yeah, so we're recording this show uh, a week early, so I can talk to you, uh, ask you how your Thanksgiving was, right? You can ask me how my Thanksgiving yeah. was. Yes, uh, t- temporarily, you were on that my makes side sense. of the yeah. yeah, my side of the country, right? I was. was I was over in uh, my son is going to school in Portland, Oregon, and so he had a very short break this year. Um, he basically would have, if he had flown home, he would have had like three days at home. My daughter finished an internship, so her semester ended early. And uh, so we decided to do the very economical uh, path of taking three of us and flying out to uh, stay in a house that we were renting instead of taking one of us and flying them back to a house that we own. But yeah, of uh, course. but it did allow the family to really be together for uh, for an extended period of time. We had we were out there for eight days. Lucas, no, nice. my son was with us for six and a half of those. Like so it 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 worked really well. You know, we. We've always enjoyed, I mean, mostly always, you know, we grew, we had, we raised two kids, so there were yeah. unenjoyable moments, of course, but you know, we really enjoy our family time together as the four of us. And, and obviously we, we, no one's at a point in their life where it makes sense for us to always be together and that's good. But when we do have the opportunity to be together, we all really focus on, yeah, that's great. on, on just making it happen. And it's, you know, a compressed period of time, but we get to hang out. And then, you know, we all go our separate ways and do our things. And my daughter's actually off to Italy tomorrow. And my son is oh, nice. finishing up his semester. And, you know, Lisa and I are doing our, like, we're all living our lives, which is that's how great. it's, it should be at this Supposed point in time. Yeah. yeah, that's right. I think yeah. it's great. I think that's, a. I, I would feel the same, uh, or I, I do feel the same and you get everybody together. And, and it's this, I think they're more important because these, those moments are kind of fleeting uh, yes. in the sense that as as they expand their world and, you know, do their thing, there will be less and less of that. And so it's great. We were able to get together. Uh, and, uh, we, we took my daughter to, we took the family, but her, you know, I think it was her high school. I don't know. There was some, something, was it a high school graduation trip? I guess it would have been. Yeah. We did it the year before her graduation. I think, I don't know, four or five years ago, we took the family to Europe for two weeks uh, and that was the, like as we prepared that vacation and planned it, we planned it for like six months, which really I high, if you can do that, I highly recommend it because there's so much enjoyment that you can get out of the planning process. Uh, you know, in oh, addition to yeah. just, yeah, I, in fact, I've heard people say, even if you can't afford to go on vacation, plan one, you'll <laughs> actually enjoy it. I like, like that. right. Yeah. You know, it's like thinking about all the things you can do. And, uh, as we were getting close to that trip, we, I don't know why, but we all realized, and it's probably because it was her, you know, graduation trip and she was going to be going off to college and all that good stuff. We all realized, wait a minute, like our time together is, will end. It's limited. It's not right. Right. Cause it was, you know, up until then we all lived in the same house. I mean, it's just how, you know, how it was raising two kids. Yeah. And it, leading into that trip, we all realized, oh, wait a minute, like this is going to be a thing. And so, you know, my son w- had to only go to sleepaway camp for two weeks instead of a month that summer, and all, which he did. And, you know, we all carved that time out of our schedules and it became this very intentional thing. And we obviously did, you know, the two weeks in Europe together. But even after that, like whenever we were all available to be home to with for dinner together, we were. And we, you know, really focused on when we could, we sort of relearned how to choose to be together as a family, as opposed to it just happening by default. And, uh, you know, and it, it like, you know, when we would have dinner together, we'd all put our phones down and, and just, you know, enjoy, even if it was just 30 minutes or whatever, it was like, yep, this is our time together. Let's make the most of it. And, and we've gotten pretty good at that. I'd like to say, 
Uh, yeah, I, and I would also say that that is the accumulation of of mm. uh, successful parenting when your kids realize that as well. Instead of, I guess you know, at a certain time in their life, they're like, "Oh, get away! I want to be, I yeah. want to do my own thing," which yeah. you want. That's normal you want too, to do stuff. right? So it's yeah. great that, and I have a couple of young adults as well. Uh, one that recently graduated from college, and one that's still in, in college. So yep. it's I'm, so almost I the same. Seeing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, almost the same. And I love seeing that, oh, hey, we want to be sure, you know, they, they feel the same way and, uh, you know, want to get together and value that time. That's a, that's just, it's huge. That's awesome. Were you able to have the four of you together for Thanksgiving no, this no. year? No, no. So this we, year. we, yeah. my daughter, uh, her boyfriend uh, lives in Pennsylvania, or his parents live in Pennsylvania. So they go up there typically for Thanksgiving, the last couple of Thanksgiving, and my daughter will be home for, uh, for Christmas. She comes home in a couple of weeks, so she'll be home. Uh, and we'll all be together at that time. But we had my son, and he brought a couple or one of his buddies that didn't have anywhere to go um, cool. from school. So we yeah. and we went up to Tahoe. We had our huge family event here locally in Lafayette, where we had sit down dinner for about twenty people. I smoked two turkeys, which I'd never done before. Which is uh, it was a little little stressful, but it turned out. I want to Great. talk to you about this because we ate a smoked turkey in Portland last week. We we decided not to risk trying to cook a turkey at an okay. Airbnb. Uh, you know, yeah. especially an yeah. Airbnb, we had never stayed yeah. before. We don't have all the stuff. And well, we, we didn't know what we yeah. were going to have. Yeah. So yeah. we we ordered a smoked turkey and then just heated it up in the oven. We cooked some other things and, and really did make a nice kind of, you know, family event of it. But uh, Do you like I, it? I, I, we love the smoked turkey. Yeah. So okay. I want to and we've had it before. We used to get it in Texas at the barbecue joints. Uh, ah, we could yeah. get down there. Um, I've deep fried a turkey for Thanksgiving yeah, before, but yeah, never yeah. smoked one. So I want to get smoke your... was great. Yeah. And it was, I'm not a huge turkey. I mean, it's not my yeah. preferred. I mean, I eat it uh, like in sandwiches, right? But, uh, you know, so it's probably a reason why we cook turkeys once a year. Um, but the smoking was terrific in the sense that it's very juicy. Um, yeah. It takes a long time or you, or you, you know, you're low temperature, long time. And then this time I did one with regular seasoning and I did one spicy. Oh. And I have to say, uh, the spicy one was much more popular. And because turkey's kind of bland. It's bland. You know? and, yeah. and so the spice was, everybody loved that. And the gravy was incredible. The gravy was super smoky because I caught the drippings up front in the smoker. Got it. Uh, and that was, that might've been the most important part of it. Um, Makes sense. And then up in Tahoe, we went up and, and they're actually for actually Thanksgiving with some friends and my son. Uh, I cooked a turkey on the rotisserie on the Weber on the charcoal grill. Really? And we do that up there. And oh, it's, I actually thought that tasted better than the smoked one. My wife That's disagreed, amazing. but yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. So That's I'm, great. I'm, I love I'm that. Yeah. It. I love it. It's great. So yeah, I'm glad to hear your update. Um, And I hope and everyone listening has, yeah. you know, I hope everyone. Listening was we pull you back two weeks prior to uh, to Thanksgiving. I think it's just a great time of year, and I love I love this uh, time of year. Yeah, the holidays and getting yeah. together and yeah, I like it for stuff, getting so. together. The the the, yeah, the gifting too. thing can get to be an issue. You know, it's a little it can <laughs> it can distract yeah. from the getting together yeah. at times, yeah. which is part of why I really like Thanksgiving because generally that's that's not part of it. So. Yeah, it's hey, great. You know, it's good stuff. Speaking of your small business and and gifting, uh, there was a an announcement from the SBA uh, just reminding us all that we have until December 31st to apply for EIDL relief. The loans, the targeted advance, all that stuff is still going to be accepted up through December 31st, and it will be po- processed after that until funds are exhausted. So make sure you take a look at that and and see what it is that that you might yeah. be able to apply for still. Yeah, we did. So, we mentioned that a, a few episodes as yeah. well and talked a little more in depth if you want to search EIDL up at businessshow.co. But go. yeah, the, the advance, I think you can still get up to $10,000 yeah, uh, depending on number of employees that they give you, it, that they give uh, you, right? And right. then the balance is, you know, it's a thirty-year. You have thirty years to pay it off. I think the interest rate's still around three and a half percent. Yep. Uh, and um, it's a great bridge loan uh, as well. It's great to borrow money when you don't need it. Um, right. And uh, <laughs> I think they give you twelve months to start making payments. You're, yeah, you're going to accumulate interest during that time. But um, 
I know we did it. I paid mine back because I didn't, yeah. I wound up not needing them. We did the um, same here but, with uh, with the company yeah. that we that we operate the small business show inside of. So yeah, yeah. So yeah. It, you know, it's I I I loved being able to do it because we just didn't know what was going to happen. So if if you're listening and you're not sure how your 2022 is going to be, or you've had a significant drop in revenue. I think it's a great resource. And, it's a, it's, and it was a nice easy to get. Yeah, it was an yeah. easy to get thing. The interest wasn't yeah. terribly expensive and yeah. it was well worth it from a confidence standpoint. Yes. Knowing yeah. that the funds were av- like in my control as opposed yeah. to, oh crap, I need to go apply for them. Right. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. I wish they had done it as lines of credit, but I understand the management of that because I would yeah. have loved to have just been like, hey, uh, we've given you, you know, $150,000 line of credit when you access it, uh, here's the three and a half percent interest rate, because that would be just great. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. But, but then, right. then we're not paying interest, Shannon. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, well, I understand that. <laughs> and all and depends so the management on perspective of it is, is yeah. more as well. So, but I thought it was great. Um, and, uh, like I said, go back and listen to the EIDL episodes that we've done and, uh, Maybe there'd help. One more thing from the SBA. They uh, they've got, you know, we mentioned in a recent episode that they have all those newsletters and everything. And so I've been paying attention to those, Shannon. Nice. And they sent out uh, they shared an IRS video about how to settle your debt with the IRS on your own. Oh, I, I'm not sure I would choose to go down that path. I, I think if I was ever in a scenario where the IRS decided I owed the money, I would very likely want to pay an accountant to be my agent in that particular negotiation. However, knowing the process is helpful regardless of who is doing the interfacing because you want to you're you're the quarterback of this thing, you know, or at least you're the you're the manager, right? You're the one stuck holding holding the bag you're and paying the bill. Yes. That's it. Yes. So uh, it's good to understand the process. And and so it's a short little video. It's it's, it's easy, but I, I put a link to it in the show notes. So. Oh, good. That's yeah. great. Yeah. I've done it both ways. Okay. Um, when we've owed and, you know, we kind of fought some things and, uh, you know, I think it really depends on the dollar amount. Um, and, and either way, you really have to be involved because, to your point, you're going to be paying the bill, not your accountant right. <laughs> or your or your tax attorney. Right. Uh, and o- over the years, you know, like I said, we've done a couple ways. So if it's a small amount, I've actually found working with the IRS super um, pretty easy. And maybe in my case, and it was, you know, kind of some basic stuff that we argued about and we lost, but uh, they just pointed <laughs> out, hey, you know this, that, and you get, can't do it that way. Yeah. Um, but if you're cool with them, um, I think they're pretty cool with you. And and I would say the one tip I've said a few times on the show over the years is if you get the wrong person on the phone, just hang up and call back and get somebody else. Yeah. And you may have to do that a couple of times that sometimes you get a case advisor that, that will be your, your total point of contact, but oftentimes it's different people. Mm. And some of them may just be having a bad day and you just want to say, Hey, thanks. I got to go, but I'll call back and you're going to get somebody different. And you can use your persuasion techniques to make it a better experience. To make it work out a little better. I like that. That's yeah. Yeah. yeah, Smart, smart. Yeah. I, and I would agree with that. I, I've, I've been through only a couple of things with the IRS, but me too. um, Thankfully, I'm sure I will have more uh, in the well, future. Th- there is more coming, apparently. Uh, yeah. um, oh, I no. know that's, uh, you know, it's kind of being sold as targeted very wealthy people. But as we know, small business owners tend to get swept up in that yep. uh, based on revenue. And if you have passed through income, um, it can really hit you. So you want to be sure you go back and listen to our accounting episodes and make sure your accounting is working great. Um because that's going to be important, I think, in the next few years. I don't disagree. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We have, um, we have, a, we, I want to talk about sick days. In fact, listener Martin wants us to talk about sick days. The next thing that I want to do, though, Shannon, is talk about our two sponsors, if that works for you. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Hey, look, you know, when running our businesses, HR issues can kill us. Things like minimum wage requirements, labor regulations, even wrongful termination suits can come and get us, especially when we're not paying attention. And listen, HR manager salaries ain't cheap. 
They run an average of 70 grand a year. Well, our sponsor, Bambi, spelled B-A-M-B-E-E, was created specifically for small business. You can get a dedicated HR manager, craft your HR policy, and maintain your compliance all for just 99 bucks a month. I know. With Bambi, you can change HR from your biggest liability to your biggest strength. Your dedicated HR manager is available by phone, real-time chat, or email for things like... I don't know, onboardings and terminations and on all of this stuff, they customize your policies to fit your business and help you manage your employees day to day all for, again, just ninety nine dollars a month. You've heard about this. If you are a listener to this show, we've been talking about Bambi for a while because they've been sponsoring for a while. If you haven't done this yet, now is the time. They are here to help. And it's all month to month. There's no hidden fees. You can cancel at any time. So unless you started your business because you wanted to spend all your time on HR compliance, go to Bambi.com slash small right now to schedule your free HR audit. That's Bambi.com slash small spelled BAM to the B-E-E dot com slash small. And our thanks to Bambi for sponsoring this episode. You know, there are so many moving parts when it comes to running a small business. It can feel impossible to figure out what to focus on to win against the competition. And that's why you need to listen to the David versus Goliath podcast. This podcast will help you find the clarity you need to slay the Goliath in your industry. It's a must listen for entrepreneurs, for people who are small businessing every day, like all of us here at the Small Business Show. The David versus Goliath podcast is packed with insight to help small business owners beat our large competitors. Host Adam DeGrade is a serial entrepreneur. He's passionate about creating a space where we can all come together and learn from one another. He interviews small business owners from a variety of industries to share their best practices and their mistakes that they've made along the way. Like Bob Tasca, who took his family's automotive business from a single point dealership to one of the largest auto groups in the USA. Or David Dorman, a realtor who runs his own Century 21 franchise. Adam knows it's never just one thing that makes a business successful. It's a combination of things. So each episode covers the five areas that every business needs to thrive. Plus, sales role-playing, guest interviews, and practical tips to take action today. You need the David vs. Goliath podcast to get inspired and educated on not only how to compete, but to win. Subscribe to the David vs. Goliath podcast on YouTube, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And our thanks to the David vs. Goliath podcast for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon. So we got this note from Martin here. And yeah. uh, it, it was about the title. He sent us a link. And the, the, the title of this article on Axios.com is Sick Days Disappear in the Remote Working World. And Martin wanted to know if we had any thoughts about this. Um, it, the, I'll read a little bit of this so that we can sort of set the stage. Before the pandemic, if you woke up with a runny nose or a tickle in your throat, it was a simple enough decision to stay home and avoid and avoid infecting your coworkers. Now, as more Americans work from home, sick days are disappearing. Why it matters? Working through sickness fatigue makes it harder for people to recover quickly and completely, prolonging the harm to their health and productivity. And it also leads to an epidemic of presenteeism, showing up for work when you're not feeling up to it and not doing your best job. So then there's more to it in this article, too, and we'll probably get into some of this stuff. But uh, but I wanted to set the stage here. You have thoughts about this, Shannon? I do. I think one of the first things we need to do or uh, you might want to do in your company is change the terminology and don't call them sick days anymore. Uh, just call it personal days and you can do whatever you want with them. Um, I think that takes some of the, you know, am I sick? Am I not whatever away from it? And if you're going to like give as part of your benefit package, Hey, uh, X number of sick, you know, personal days, it, you can just, you know, have to refer to them as sick days. Now there are going to be times where people are just like, Hey, I'm just not feeling up to it. Um, but, I, I think how you frame it is a good way to start the uh, the discussion about um, take time off. You need it. You know, we, we want you to take, take it. And, and also understand that uh, being present isn't the number one priority. The number one priority is your productivity and the results, of course, right? If, if you can do your job with less time, well, I mean, that's, that's okay. Yep. Um, and not that, hey, I'm here. We have a friend that started working from home and she was explaining it that like they had to log in to Skype at 
you know, 7.59 in the morning yeah. and be active all day long. I was like, that's terrible. You know, uh, what are you doing is is more important of the fact that, hey, I'm I'm here and I'm I'm moving my mouse so you can see activity. Right, yeah, <laughs> exactly, computer. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, that's not so. I, well, I think how you present it to your employees is, is the first step. I agree. I, I think step one is having a, pr- a, a, a culture of productivity and results. Like that's to me, that's where it starts. And quite frankly, that's where it ends. I like we've been remote effectively for forever. Yeah. yeah, 23, great. Right. 23 years. Right. You know, and and we, we have had office space at times. We've had staff in the same city that wanted to work together, which was fine. But even then there was no accountability to be in the office. It was, you know, look, tell me if neither of you are coming to the office anymore. So we stop paying rent, you know, but other than that, the, that was the only sort of accountability to it was let's make sure we, if we do this, we use it. And, uh, but otherwise our culture has always been about productivity and, and results. I, I, yeah, I know that if I set myself up in a scenario where micromanaging is possible, I will be awful about it and I will That's hate so it good. and my employees yep. will hate it. And, and I tell anybody that comes to work for me pretty much exactly that. Like if either of us catches me micromanaging you, that is the sign of a problem. It is also a problem in and of good itself, that. Yeah. but, but that, like if you see it, you got to tell me because I'm probably seeing it too, but maybe not. And one, you know, we got to bring it to each other if that's if that's happening. Yeah, because there's a reason, right? And there's a, so something has gone it, wrong. It, yeah. yeah, and yeah, right. and the um, the interesting thing is from that we have never limited people's sick days. Uh, we've always told people, and so we do have a, a, a we do define them differently from personal days or vacation days. Okay, because yeah. sick days have always been unlimited. Um, and now, paid? what's that? Yep, paid. Yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, uh, for our salaried people, our sick days are yeah, unlimited. Yeah. And sure, again, it, sure. it comes down to trust, right? Like it, we are all about productivity, obviously. If you're sick, you are not going to be productive. Like that's just and, how, and I and I yeah and I agree and I think there's a this definition of uh, or defining it for salaried employees yes. versus hourly employees yes. is important. How you're get, you probably have to deal with them differently. I would assume. Um, yeah, yeah, and so um, that that's a different. It is a different discussion. I agree with you 100. Salaried people is like, hey, you you're going to manage your own time, right? And, you're going to manage your own time. Get, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we we started doing in. unlimited vacation time. I think we talked about it on the show uh, five or six years ago, and that I think has worked out well. Although there is the risk, the the, the risk of which I am very well aware that if people are not accruing vacation time they may get too focused on productivity and not take any vacation time. And I, I do try to lead by example in this regard, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. it, you know, where it's like, no, I'm going to take time off and, and I'll, I, you know, I choose to be available. I make it clear to my employees. I do not expect them to choose to be available when they are taking vacations. And there right. are some where I also choose not to be. I try to, I try to, like I said, I try to lead by example in that regard. I'm sure I fail in lots of different ways, um, but yeah. you know, but yeah. it has worked out well for us and our culture. So got it. Yeah. So if, if we're, if we've kind of covered the sick thing, I think it's a good uh, segue into this vacation Yeah. and an article like you recently shared with me where the author talked about engineered chaos. Um, actually, I think it was a tweet, right? On Twitter. And Talking about, hey, uh, fo- you know, he referred to them as forced vacations, right? Meaning, you know, hey, you got it. You, you need to go block out this time. We want you to take a vacation. Uh, and, and I think that's very important as well for the employee as well as for your for your business. And I have some I have some thoughts on that if you want to. Uh, yeah, no, on. let's do it. I'm, I'm I, this is because this is the area this is the risky area like i said yeah. for for me for the way we do things yeah yeah i think it, it it number one you know it can help rejuvenate your employee just like you feel better after you go on vacation yeah. and get away and a lot of times you think i can't be away who's going to do all this stuff i guarantee your employee thinks the same thing right so pulling them out of that is important to do kind of a framing reset because you 
you want them to be confident about what they do, but not so confident that they think nobody can do my job. Right. Uh, Cause they're, they're, it's kind of a fine line there. Um, <laughs> but I also think it's really good for your business in the sense that if you want to find flaws in the systems that you're using, you, you got to pull people out and, and then talk to your team about, okay, uh, you know, Shannon's going to be on vacation next week. Um, these are some of the things that need to be done, delegate them out, or if they have an assistant or somebody in their department, uh, you want to see that to expose problems that may be getting overlooked, uh, overlooked or worse hidden. Right. Mm. And if, and you know, I've been in this position where I've had people, unfortunately, hide problems and you did not know about them either until you made them, you know, take some time off or you, you know, uh, unfortunately had to let them go. And then all of a sudden everything comes crumbling down. Right. Um, right. And, and he, so I think it's great to uh, bring any, any weaknesses up to the surface, uh, you know, cause you should be able to manage things without someone there and your other employees should be able to step in uh, and it's good for them. It's good for you. We've talked about it on the show before about, stepping into an employee's role to do uh, some things. And I think, Dave, in your case, you step back into actually managing part of a business that you weren't anymore. And, and you, I wasn't, you that's right. Yeah. Kind of rejuvenated the business and you, right? And me. I was just going to say more me than the business, but, yeah. but you know, the one is a byproduct of the other for sure. Yeah. 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 But so this, that's, that's this forced vacation thing, that, like, I, would someone do this by surprise? Like, would you? Would you say next week you well, are off, right? Well, that's, like, you know, the financial industry does that. They do. Uh, a couple of articles that were, you know, linked in uh, that one in Forbes about how to yeah. combat employee theft and fraud is a big part of it is like, hey, you're off this week uh, or next week or whatever it is. And uh, lots of fiduciary type of businesses uh, rely on that to catch things because if somebody doesn't ever want to leave and give up control of their fief, <laughs> yeah. there, there's, there may be a reason. Um, and, you know, I think it's also really good for just emergency prep. You know, what happens if someone um, takes another job? What happens yeah. if, uh, what happens if they get know, sick? Like if they the really point, get sick, they really, yeah, yeah they get, gone. yeah, if they get, yeah. yeah. Wow. That's, yeah, so. that's, I, I mean, it, as a, as a small business owner running a business with, you know, 10 or less employees, the idea of willingly choosing to have one of them not there seems preposterous to me. <laughs> well, right? Like, I it's agree. Like, I agree. I, you know, but, but. All the more reason why you should do it. <laughs> all the more reason why you should do it. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah I, I agree. And I think there's also one last uh, thing on my list is. If you allow your uh, employees to just ac accumulate more and more vacation days, well, those are a liability on your books, right? Yeah. And if yeah. and if you're a small business and you're going to let somebody go, I can remember having this discussion, and I would tell you know Renee, my wife, who ran our HR and did the bookkeeping, I'd say, hey, I want, I unfortunately, I'm going to have to let this person go, and she'd go, well, what day do you want to do it? Because we, how much vacation do they have? Because we got to write them a big check, <laughs> you know. Oh, uh, right. And, and, and so. You've got to manage your cash flow, and you you know you should have a limit. Uh, I think we had three weeks. After three weeks, you know you didn't accumulate you don't it. Accrue anymore? Uh, yeah, accrue anymore. And so you really—that's a good way. Like I wouldn't if if I had a small team, uh, I and I could. It's like, hey, you got to go on vacation. It's a different discussion. It's like, look, man, you're getting. You know, I can sense it. We want everybody to take their time. Uh, you know, I want you to book some vacation because you're going to stop accruing. And that usually motivates somebody to, okay, I'll take a week off here or whatever. Yeah. Um, the other thing we used to do is give away trips because we had so many miles. We've talked about uh, frequent flyer and affinity points with hotels on this show many times. If you search for credit cards at businessshow.co, you'll find ways to help live a charmed life. And you can also help your employees. So we would say, look, Every year we typically gave away a trip and we had so many uh, points. We could say, you can go anywhere in the world and you would give them the wow. list. Right. And so they could go, it doesn't matter. They could go to Europe. They could go to Hawaii. They could go wherever because you would just, you could cover the flights and the hotel. It wouldn't sure. cost you anything but your points because we had millions of points. 
Um, this was at a time where our FedEx and UPS shipping bills were about two hundred. Two hundred thousand dollars a month, oh. and you, we paid them all. We paid them all with our credit cards, which yeah. was just fantastic. Yeah. Um, and we paid everything else with the cards. So we built those up. So it's an incentive to get people to go when you drop a trip and do some random thing, or you know, the other thing is to have them vote on who should get the trip. That's an interesting exercise. <laughs> um, but getting their involvement, it gets people gone, and you get that. Uh, culture of, hey, we want you to leave. We want you to go and come back refreshed, bring new ideas, things you've thought about outside of work. Um, so you want them gone so you can, they can benefit, but you can also benefit as well. I like it. Huh. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Different, different ideas to do it. And, you know, if you have ways that uh, you manage this thing, uh, you know, vacation or, you know, sick time, personal days, please share them. Uh, feedback at businessshow.co or come up, to, go to businessshow.co slash Facebook and uh, you'll get routed over to the small business support group. Post it there and share your ideas. We would sure. love to yeah. uh, to hear them. For sure. Your, um, your comment about... Uh, uh, the, the people voting on who gets to take the trip reminded me of something. My son is out at Reed College, yeah, which is uh, in Portland, Oregon. As I said at the beginning of the episode, it's where Steve Jobs went. Um, and learn for, about fonts. Right? For, what's that? And learn about fonts. Learned and about fonts. yeah, and also met a um, a guy named Richard Crandall who was a professor at Reed until he passed away. Uh, cryptography. Yeah. computer science and and like math guy and that actually wound up being part of the key to apple's success in in future years when steve came back to apple mm. he went back to crandall and and uh and actually had him build what at the time was sort of a skunk works operation to solve all the difficult algorithmic problems. Oh, that's awesome. It was interesting. He left him in Portland. It was, it's a fascinating story about the uh, Apple. I think they call it the advanced computing group, uh, which is still in Portland to this day, if you believe the rumors, um, but they don't talk about it, which is also fascinating. But anyway, um, my son went to, there's some guy that comes on campus uh, on a, you know, semi irregular basis with used books and he found uh, it, this guy had a copy of the whole earth catalog. And, uh, and so Lucas bought it just to have around the house because it was just a fascinating thing to see. And Steve jobs used to quote Stuart brand. And, and that's where that whole yeah. stay hungry, stay foolish kind of thing came from and, and all that. So it was interesting to have around the house at, at, at our Airbnb this week. And so I would glance through it and it really was like, like, you know, a paper version of Amazon marketplace. Like there were just things that's from awesome. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It was fascinating to, to read through. And there was one book that Stuart Brand himself had reviewed. I just, you know, this thing was hundreds of pages long. And I just, it was, I think it was the, the essential whole earth catalog. If anybody's looking for it, it was published in 86. And, uh, and, but there was a book in it that Stuart Brand had reviewed uh, called Getting to Yes. And it was negotiating. It's, it's a negotiating book and it's negotiating agreement without giving in. And, his one example from this book, I've never read this book. I don't, I don't know if you know of this book called getting to yes, Shannon. Oh, I've heard of, I've heard of it, but yeah. I, don't, I don't, I haven't read it. Yeah. And his Stuart brand's example that, that sort of made him highlight this book in the, in the catalog was when you have to choose how to uh, come up with something. And he used a custody arrangement, uh, have each spouse create the custody that the other spouse will get. Oh, and I thought, what a fascinating thing. He's like, you know, because the he, he, Stuart Brand was saying and his Stuart Brand was the one who created the whole Earth catalog, along with many other things in his life. Uh, but he was saying, you know, I hate negotiating. I hate being in that position. But if you're in this scenario where you're you're both trying to create something truly fair, uh, then that's different than everybody holding their cards so close to the vest. Right. And right. And the example of having, you know, two divorcing spouses choose each other's custody oh, arrangement yeah. will in, encourage you both to create something quite fair uh, in the, in the process. And I just thought that was an interesting tactic. It is. Yeah. I, and I'm, I'm sure I'm going to use it at some point. I, 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 so I'm probably will pick up this book and read it, but I'll put, I'll put a link yeah. in the show notes, but yeah, no, that's great. Yeah. I mean, when we used to have the employees vote on stuff like that, I mean, you, you really get, uh, and, and we made him give the reasons, right? Yeah. So it, it really helps you see 
parts of your employees that maybe you don't see. Maybe there's, yeah. you know, because you, you're, as the owner, the person that signs the checks, you have a different impact when you walk through and people are doing things that work for you. It, it's just, you can't avoid it. It's right? totally different. Uh, yep. I, I always, you know, come back to the people that actually create or became some of the best employees I ever had. Those were the people that sat next to me when I, at our Friday barbecues. Interesting. And a lot of people didn't want anything to do with me, you know, all the way yeah. to the other end of the, another table, this kind of thing, just close enough to, you know, but far enough away, you know, that kind yeah. of stuff. But having yeah. them describe why this person should do it, they may be a quiet person that I totally overlooked and they, write down something they did great, how they helped a customer, how they solved a problem at work. And it's great to reward those people for things you may not have seen. I like it. I yeah, like it's it. Cool. It's good, man. Right. It's good. Good stuff. So yeah, let us know how you handle these issues. Feedback at businessshow.co. And, uh, or if you want to feature, you know, your business on the small business show, let us know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'd love to hear your story. We love stories. We tell our stories all the time. Come on, tell yours. We'd love to hear from you. Feedback at businessshow.co. That's what I got for today, Shannon. You got anything else? No, me too. All right. Great make stuff. sure make sure to check out our sponsors. Of course, the David versus Goliath podcast and bambi.com slash small. Keep living that charm life, folks. See you next week.